Now there are different ways to do it. We can use events to do data binding. We can use properties to do data binding. Inside this section, we will discuss what is interpolation and how do we display the data to the user using interpolation. Next, we will discuss how to do event binding using different events and binding them to the component properties. The same in the next case, which is property binding, we'll be using properties to bind the data to the DOM elements. Using two-way two data binding to see how in the latest versions of Angular, we use ng model to do two-way data binding, which is actually a combination of event binding and property binding. And in the end, we'll do a demo on data binding and create an Angular project doing the same. So let's get started. Interpolation is done using these two curly braces and anything that comes between these two curly braces is known as template expression. Interpolation is a way of displaying the data to the user instead of hard coding the value. To do interpolation, you go to the HTML of your project and put the property inside these two curly braces and display the value. Now to display this value, the project looks for the component and goes there to search for the value of this property. Now the value of this property message here is welcome to BPB, which will go to the HTML and will be displayed because of these two curly braces. So this is how interpolation works. So now let's go and try doing this in Visual Studio Code. So we go to Visual Studio Code and we have already created a component here called message.component.ts. Inside this, we want to do interpolation. So for that, the very first step is to take a string here inside the class message component. So let's take message, which is of string 5, and let's give it some value. Let's say, welcome to BPP. Now to use this, we need to do interpolation. So we'll go inside the template of our component. And here, inside the heading tag, let's interpolate the value. So using curly braces, we'll just simply put the name of the value with the name of the property, that's the message. And here, we have interpolated the value. That's all about doing interpolation. Now, let's, after compiling it, let's just see if it's compiled. Oh, yes, it's successfully compiled. Let's go to browser to check the results. So, localhost. Oh, yes. So, the message that we displayed, welcome to BPB, is here. So, this is all about interpolation. There are many other ways of doing data binding. Let's see that in the next chapter. Square brackets are used in Angular to do property binding. Any property that needs to be modified or to be bound to the HTML element needs to be put inside these two square braces and there you go with property binding. To do property binding, this is how you do it. Suppose you have an image tag, there you go with this property src of that image and you provide it any value. So this src property of image tag is to be bound to the DOM element. We can use many other properties inside these two squared braces. For example, name.id, name.contact, any such property can be used inside these two squared braces and you can access the property of a variable with property binding. Now let us try to do property binding inside our project. So here inside our component, let us create a property say height, which is of type number and let us give it some value say 20. Yeah. Now to use this property inside our template, let us create, let us go to our template and create a button. Any tag you can create just to use the property of that tag. So I've created this button for which I want to change the height, which I have already hard coded the value in the class message component. So inside the template, now I'll say style.height.px. I want to change this property of my button to height. So I'll give it the value height. So this is how I want to change the property of my button. And let us give our button some name. Let's say click me and close the button. Now I am expecting that the height of this button would change to the value that is given here, which in this project is 20. As of now, you can give it any value. 
Let's just close our button. That's it. Now let's go and see the results. So now let's check in the browser about the results of our just created button. Great. So this is my button whose height I have changed to 20. And this is the string that we did during the interpolation example. So great. We have used property binding for this event. We could also change the value of our button to anything else. Let's just do that. So I want my button to change its value to 50 or let's say 60 now. And let me just save it because Angular is very dynamic. Now we'll see without compiling it again, you can simply see the results after going to the browser. So let's go to the browser and here it is. The value has changed to 60 for my button. Moving on, let's go on to discuss the next way of binding in data binding, which is event binding. So there are times when you want the passage of information the other way. That is from your template to the component. That is when we use event binding. So what I just said means that whenever you have some operation inside your template and you want that on the click or on the operation of that, you want something in the component to get executed. That's when you use event binding. To do event binding, we use round brackets and inside that the operation of something that has to be done is written. Let us see what we mean by this. So for example, we have a button and we want that on the click of this button, which is in the template, there is some event in the component which has to be executed. So on this operation of click event, event on the right, which is called event, has to be executed. Now let's go to Visual Studio Code and try doing event binding here. So for the sake of convenience, we have already taken some values. So there's one number which is called num1 which has the value 10 whereas this other num1 number num2 which has the value 40. And to store the addition of these two numbers we have created another variable which is called result. We have also created a function called add which is going to add the value of num1 and num2 and, put this, and store the result in result. This function will also add the result after adding the values. Now this is the function that we want to be executed whenever there is some operation that's getting performed in the HTML. So now let's go to the template which is the HTML and do event binding here. So now I want that this is my button and on the click of this button I want this function add to be executed. So I have to perform event binding inside this button. So after property binding I want that on the click of this button which is click I want this function add to be executed, so I'll simply call add here. That's just all about event binding. So I have called that on the click of this button, the function add should be called. So this goes from the HTML to the component. This is the component where this function add is. And what it's doing, it's simply adding the value of num1 and num2 to result and then alerting the value of result. Let us go to the browser to see the results now. Here in the browser, now I want that on the click of this button, I should get an alert saying the addition of these two, those two numbers. So let's click on the button and great. It tells us the value of the result, which is the addition of those two numbers. Great. So this is all about event binding. The latest versions of Angular have come up with a very interesting concept to work with event binding and property binding together. You can say this is a replacement for for what was called two-way data binding in the earlier versions of Angular. So whenever we want to use event and property binding together by using their braces, that is the square brackets and the round brackets, and using this keyword ng model inside that, we are able to perform two-way data binding in this manner. So this is a very simple and easy pictorial representation of what actually ng model and two-way data binding is in the latest versions of Angular. So it says that property binding, when done together with event binding, they together sum up to make an ng model, which is a concept, just like two-way data binding. So now to perform two-way data binding in Visual Studio Code, let us take two input types, which are of type number. And now that we want to use two-way data binding here, we'll use square braces inside that down brackets, and we'll say ng model, which is the keyword to be used here use here and let us take it equal to num1 similarly we'll do for the other one 
let's just copy it from here and paste it here whereas in this case this is num2 yeah so this is sorted we have taken input types which are of number type and one is taking number one whereas the other one is taking number two now we want on the browser that it should be dynamic enough so that it can add the value and show it to us here so if we go to the browser and check the results okay we have the text boxes here let us put values like 20 and 50 and we want it to show us result as 70 great so it is dynamic that is the that is the power of two-way data binding that is the power of ng model so this was about using ng model to perform two-way data binding in angular in the last part of this section we will create an end-to-end -end demo project using all the bindings that we discussed since the beginning of this section that is from interpolation till the two-way data binding in this part of data binding section We'll quickly see how to do interpolation, event binding, property binding, and two-way data binding to look for some output as the data binding result. So let us start with interpolation. So now as we understand that interpolation is done to display data on the view. So for that, let's take some string which says my first data binding project and let's close it here the stack should be removed and now we want that message to be displayed on the view so for that we use interpolation so we're not going to create another html file we're doing this in the template itself so i'll use some tag for heading say h1 And inside that, let's simply interpolate our data, which is message. So this is very simple, all about interpolation. Now coming to the next way of doing data binding, which is property binding. For that, I want to create a button. And this button should, let's say it says click me. Let me just put button, close it. The button says click me. Now I want to change some property of this button. So for property we need to know, we need to take square brackets inside that. Let's change this height, the height of this button. So for that we'll take style.height.px which goes equal to let's say height. So we're not, ta we're taking it dynamically and we're not simply hard coding the value. So yeah the height of the button should change to height and let's take this variable here which is equal to height which is of number type and let's take some value now let's hard code some value let's take the value of this button to be 70 the height of this button to be 70 so this is all about property binding where you could simply change some property of a tag which in this case is a button coming to the next way of doing data binding which is event binding we can do that sim same in this one. So event binding is used to access the event which is mentioned in the component from the template of our project. So now I want that on the click of this button here. So on the click of this button, I want some event to get executed. Let's say the event is called add and let's create this event here in the component. This will do nothing, but it will add two numbers. So we'll take those numbers. Let's say this dot num one plus this dot num two is equal to this dot result. And let's declare these variables here. Num one is of number type which is equal to let's say 10 again num2 which is of number type which is equal to 50 we also need to take result variable result which is again going to be a number yeah so that is all about event binding let us display this value using alert yeah now the fourth way of doing data binding is very important which is two-way data binding 
So for that, let us just comment these two numbers and take them using two-way data binding. For that, I'll take an input box here, input type equals to let's say number. And now because I want it to happen dynamically, that is through two-way data binding, so I need to use the keyword ng model here, which goes equal to num1, which is the value of our first number. And let's close it here. The same we're going to do for the other number, that is num2. So I'll take, I'll just copy it and paste in the next line, which is the next input type. Again, it's of type number, ng model equals to, here instead we'll say num2. So this is how we implement two-way data binding using ng model. Now time to look at the results. Let us go to the browser to see the results now. Localhost. And this is the project that we just created. This is the result of interpolation wherein we wrote the message my first data binding project. This text box is due to ng model which is two-way data binding. This button is property binding which gives it this height. Then we did event binding which let's see now if I want to click this button I should get some output. It says not a number as of now because we have not input any number. So let's try inputting some number. Let's say one number is 50 and the other one is just 10. I mean, yeah. And now when I click on this button, it gives me the result 60. That is what I wanted. So yes, event binding is also done. So these are the four ways of doing data binding. And this is the output for that. Let us move on.